Hello! Back here at part two of uh, introduction into the uh, horizontal sun and honing machine. And uh, in the last video, I was talking about expected accuracy. And uh, with this type of mandrel here, they're saying that the, uh, <clears throat> oh, the old advertised uh, accuracy that you could expect out of the handheld mandrel uh, that was similar to this was uh, half a thousandths for your size and taper and roundness. And uh, you can get about two ten thousandths you can count on it, you know, with, with care. Um, using uh, this mandrel in, in this machine. Okay, now this type of mandrel here has a single stone and a shoe. Now this kind of mandrel, um, Sonnen used to used to advertise. I don't know if they still say, do it anymore, but they they say that you can get half of a ten thousandths, you know, if just basically using it and doing it properly, you can get half of a ten thousandths for size taper and out of roundness and stuff. And one of the interesting things I'll point out about this now, this uses a single stone and a shoe. And the way this thing works, that stone is offset from the shoe, from the center of the shoe. And by doing that, they, that makes the hone um, work really well and uh, make a whole round. And if you can reverse, um, go um, like a, a cylindrical thing, if you can turn it around, it really helps getting something round. But if you can't, and I'll show you, uh, if you can't do that, here it is here. Now you use a truing sleeve. So if you can't, re uh, you know, rotate the, the work around or if it's into a blind hole, you'll have to continue to put this truing sleeve on here and true the stones. So the stones don't wear out on the tip and give you a tapered hole. You kind of have to juggle things around a little bit. But, uh, okay, they say uh, 50 millionths accuracy with this, you know, standard accuracy. But with practice, you can uh, get 25 millionths accuracy even better on the machine. And this makes this machine here the most accurate machine in my shop. So you can kind of get yourself out of a lot of trouble, you know. Uh, you know, for example, you're laid, if it turn, you know, if it bores a little bit taper, you can straighten it right out here, you know. And uh, uh, you can dust things out. If something's a little bit undersized, you know, like you're about five, t five tenths undersized, you can't really bore that out in the jig bore, but you can dust it out here, just no sweat at all. And in fact, you know, these sun and homes have really eliminated uh, a lot of uh, internal cylindrical grinding. And it's kind of a, 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 a almost a secret weapon in a lot of industry, I think, is the sun and horn machine. And uh, I, I've heard uh, people refer to it as a black art in operating it. But in reality, it's a, it's a hands-on machine. And if, if something is not true, you can feel it when you're operating the machine. And then you can manipulate the machine and how you're uh, uh, working the, the work on the mandrel. So I'll show you how the truing sleeves work. And... Uh, just some real basic stuff so you can get going, you know. And uh, I've had some pretty good teachers on this machine, and I'm glad to pass it on. All right. Now, the problem at hand, and why I'm uh, kind of introducing you to the machine, because I have to use it. And, uh, and that's a good way to, uh, for me to show things, I, I think, is as I need to use them, too. Um, now, this mandrel here 
it's a little different. It's uh, these are less expensive, and and they're generally in the smaller size. It doesn't have the replaceable shoes. It's just a solid one. And they make these mandrels out of different materials. They make them hard steel, soft steel, and uh, bronze. You know, depending on what you're going to hone. And of course, they have stones and everything from diamond to aluminum oxide. You know, CBN, all that stuff. Now, there's, uh, I talked about rigid honing, and uh, the machine here uh, kind of offers semi-rigid, and it's different in the, um, the old uh, hone had the gear drive. Well, this machine uses spring pressure. And there's two dials for your uh, honing pressure. And up here is your fine one. That's for your fine pressure. And this one down here is for, uh, for your uh, basic uh, medium to uh, high pressure, the lower deal here. Now, the older model machine like this uh, would be the model 1290D, and it's very much like this. It's older, but it doesn't have this upper part here with the uh, fine spring pressure for your stone pressure. It just has this one dial down here, but it, I, I don't know. You know, it, it seems to me like uh, it doesn't really matter that much. Just makes a, makes the well, I, I, I don't uh, hone one sixteenth inch holes either. <laughs> so that's part of that. Hold on just a second. Get over here. I want to get this, uh, get the original hone. Okay, just to recap. Oh, I dropped the guts out. Let me get it. Just to recap, this is the original hone, rigid hone. It uses uh, a gear drive, okay, for pressure. Now, the uh, this one here uses spring pressure, and I'll show you how that works. And it's almost rigid, you know, but uh, it it. It, there's a cushion to it, and it makes the machine safer to run, I think, you know. So, uh, basically, uh, the uh, part I have to do, and luckily I have a mandrel for it right here, is for my milling machine, and uh, I don't have to buy one, I'm just real happy about that. Okay. That's that mandrel right there. And I can show you how uh, that mandrel is here on the smaller ones here. Here's a very small one. I think that one's uh, 3 8 inch. So the shoe is uh, built into it. And uh, here's the stone here. Here's the wedge. See, I'll pull the wedge completely out and you can see how that is. That's how the wedge wedge is. Then the stone, it'll just pop out like that. It's got these little hooks there. And, and these single stone mandrels are, are basically all like that. Let's see if I can get that in there. Without too much fuss. Kind of just snaps in there, I think. There, I got it in, see? And when the wedge pushes on it, just lifts that stone out. Now, this, these smaller ones can be driven with this hand device here. You can put that in an air drill or even an electric drill. And, and this uh, works like the machine, believe it or not. And when you push this lever here, it, ret it retracts the stone. And when I let up, you can see it come up, okay? And then it's got, then it adjusts the stone right here. So this is like a mini version of the machine. It's called a Honol. And you can even, uh, they have a larger version that you can drive big ones like this. You know, like with a three quarter inch drill out in the field. So there's a lot of versatility with the machine. And this is a pretty handy thing here. Okay. 
So what I got to do is uh, I got to put a bronze bushing in this for the milling machine support for an arbor. And I'll push a bronze bushing in here. And the, and the size of the bushing is 0.7. One eighth, and that happens to be the smallest size of this uh, mandrel that I already had, and it's a long mandrel that uses three stones, and that's not going to be a problem. But it'll be kind of fun to, uh, you know, actually have uh, a project coming up that I'm going to do this, and I'll do this pretty quick. Okay, that's how that works. Now the machine here, I'm going to kick it on. And it's kind of noisy. I'll kick it on here. And it's got oil. And it's, it's real stinky oil. <laughs> it's got 15 gallons of this stuff in there. It's, uh, you know, almost like ink. And when you push the uh, foot pedal down, you see the machine, uh, the, the spindle starts. Okay? Then it's got a brake strap in there. When you let up, it stops, okay? And if you want to adjust the machine for any reason, you have to uh, turn the machine off, okay? Now, let's see how many minutes it got left. You know, this is pretty complicated stuff here. Oh, I'm out of time, and I'll be back.